Today I want to show you how I made this multi-purpose tenoning jig that can be used for everything from standard 90 degree tenons to angled tenons to cutting picture frame splines and even making raised panels. I made mine using this offcut of 3 quarter inch MDF that I had in the shop and it's just about 49 inches long and about 12 inches wide. The dimensions aren't critical here at all in either is the material, but I will say that like most things, using the flattest, most stable material you can will yield better results. I made mine 24 inches long to give me a decent amount of maneuverability with different tasks. You could make it shorter if you only want it for cutting 90 degree tendons, or even longer if you want to cut long panels. One of these pieces will be the face, and the other piece is what I will cut the saddle material out of. To get the width of my fence, I locked my fence into position right where it comes in contact with the blade, and then I made a mark on the table on the other side of the fence to reference its overall width. Then I repositioned the fence to that mark and made my cut for the top piece. Of course, you could measure the fence and then set the distance to set measurement, but this made sense to me and it worked just fine. The next piece I need is the back piece, which will sort of hold everything together. And I actually did measure this only because I want it to be just a little bit higher than the height of the fence with the MDF on top of it. With all three pieces cut, I sort of did a dry fit to make sure everything was working the way it was supposed to. The tall piece goes on the blade side of the fence, then the cover goes on, and then the back piece goes against that. And with all those three pieces together, I could get a measurement for the braces that will go on top and keep everything from flexing and moving as I use the jig. Again, the only measurement that's really critical here is the width of the fence, because you don't want any left to right play once it's all put together. I installed a half inch 14 degree dovetail bit in the router table at 3 8 of an inch high and ran two dovetail grooves four inches from both long sides of that face piece. The dovetail slots will accept these dovetail clamps and hardware, which is really what's going to make this jig so versatile, and I'll show you that here in just a minute. To hold everything together, I'm going to use these screws from SPAX that are specifically designed to not split MDF and without the need to pre-drill. These are basically straight shanked trim head screws with a specific grind to the tip and the threads, and they do a really good job. They will still split MDF if you use them within about an inch or so from the ends. So if you need to get that close to the ends, I've found that pre-drilling first with a 3 seconds inch drill bit works perfectly. Also, I'm not using any glue or anything other than the screws on this, just because I want the option of taking it apart down the road if I want to make changes or make any repairs. Once everything was assembled, I waxed the face, grooves, and the insides of the saddle. The wax, of course, will help moving parts slide more easily, but the wax on the face is just to make double-sided tape easier to pull off if I need to use it. A step that oftentimes gets forgotten when making jigs like this is checking for square. In my case, it was indeed square to the table, but it's always a good idea to double check and then adjust where necessary just in case. So I'm stealing the fences off of my tapering jig to use on this tenoning jig. This is simply a piece of half inch plywood with a quarter inch groove down the middle. This is one of those things that I've grown to really love about this dovetail system. Because I can use the same parts and pieces for multiple jigs, I have less stuff in the shop. It's way less work on my end, and in a way it kind of gets cheaper the more I use it. For the first test, I'm going to use one of the fences set at 90 degrees just to make a couple of cuts like you would on a normal 90 degree tenon. Simply set the fence angle, slide the clamps in, and secure the workpiece. It's pretty straightforward, and I like that the clamps just sort of hang there while you flip the workpiece around. Aside from the grain curling up, which is no fault of the jig, I was pretty happy with the results. Although, there was a little bit of tear out since I didn't have a backer behind the piece. So for the next test, I used some double-sided tape to fix a sacrificial backer to the face of the jig up against the fence. This worked out perfectly, and I like how easy it is to just add or subtract the sacrificial piece in there. I think where this jig really excels above the rest, though, is that by using two fences, I can do a number of different things. If I set one fence to 45 degrees and add a sacrificial backer, I can then place a frame against the backer at the height that I want and adjust the second fence to the opposite 45 to sort of sandwich them all together. This is a great setup to cut spline grooves on picture frames and it's really quick and easy to make adjustments. 
What I'm really excited for though is the ability to now make angled bridle joints. With two fences set at, in this case, 30 degrees, I can quickly go between each fence to hog out the exact center of my material at the correct angle. And this could be really beneficial for furniture size pieces, but even with this quick little demo with some three quarter inch stock, I'm pretty happy with the results all the way around.